the teenagers can't afford the sanitary pads. So the, the old men are taking chances of those teenagers. What we know condoms are essential products, and there is no tax whatsoever on condoms just because we want to stay healthy. But what of sanitary products? Now it's about the lady and the lady's period, and they want to place value on it and privatize it. For many countries in Africa and across the globe, the access to menstrual hygiene products continues to be one of the greatest challenges. Menstrual hygiene is a critical part of the broader right to health. It determines how women are able to participate in society, if they are able to go to school or if they are able to go to work. Not only is menstrual hygiene impacted by social factors such as taboos and stigma, but also by policies put in place by government that keeps menstrual health out of reach for working class women and girls. In Ghana, for instance, there is a whopping 40% tax on menstrual hygiene products as the government classifies them as luxury products rather than the essential health items that they are. This continues to keep girls out of school and is also a major factor of the increasing rate of teenage pregnancy. So to better understand this issue, I'm joined by activists from Ghana who recently held a protest dubbed Don't Tax My Period to demand the removal of all of these taxes on sanitary products in their country. Also joining me for the broader conversation on period poverty and the struggles of working class women in Lesotho is Diseto from Unite. Right, so um, tell us about the general situation in terms of period poverty in Ghana and what may have necessitated the recent you know, protest you held that don't tax my period on the 22nd of June. Okay, um, first of all, I'm Victoria Wilson from um, Ghana, Socialist Movement of Ghana. I'm an active member of the Women's Wing and which recently had held a don't tax my period parade. Um, period poverty in Ghana is quite alarming. As in, um, period, um, sanitary products are now very expensive. Uh, there's prices now shooting in the market. And all this boils down to the fact that um, recently there's been a tax that has been placed on sanitary products. That's dubbing sanitary products as a luxurious item. Apart from the value added tax that is already on product, every product in the general market, that is about 1.5. Uh, another tax has been added to the sanitary product, that is 20, 20 I think 20 percent, yes, 20 percent tax, thereby causing, shooting the tax about 40 percent on sanitary product. And because of that, it has made sanitary product very, very, very expensive. Taking it for example, maybe I can afford, but ask of that um, little girl in senior high school in the junior high school and in that, those um, remote villages, they cannot afford it. And this is becoming very alarming because these um, teenagers or these girls tend to resort to using either um, racks, yes, racks for just to keep themselves. And we know that it's, it has a looming effect on them. It has a long way effect on them. And those that think that still we need the sanitary product for our safety they go in and then they are lured by this young gentleman just for sanitary products, just for protection, which is not their fault anyways, because we are all human. The women's wing of the socialist movement of Ghana, um, we actually organized the parade, a placard parade that was dubbed Don't Tax My Period, whereby we sent a petition to the parliament house. To, we met the speaker telling him that it is uncalled for for about 40% tax to be placed on sanitary products, thereby rendering the, um, sa um, menstruation like sanitary poverty. It is, it is so alarming. And then we find it, it's disheartening. It's very disheartening. Because at the center of it all, when we are women, and then we, how we see it is that the government is trying to process the fact that Yes, we purchase this product and it's capitalizing on that and making profit out of it. And which is, you can't even think about that in that way. So that was why 
the Socialist Movement of Ghana Women's Wing thought it wise that we need to do something about it. There should be a change and the tax should be removed on sanitary products. You're also another uh, member of the Socialist Movement of Ghana and you actively participated in the Don't Tax My Period parade. Give us a brief background about Don't Tax My Period. Very well. Thank you very much, um, Makiza. Um, I'm Isaac Aba Caesar from the Socialist Movement of Ghana. So when I saw that, there is a tax that has been imposed on sanitary products for young ladies and ladies, for that matter, I felt that I should be a part of the struggle. 40% and over that um, sanitary part or period poverty should not be seen as the ladies, you know, confined to ladies. It is also a part that men, if for anything at all, so it is a collective fight in this. I can't rule my head around the fact that a government can get up and say that luxury products as part of it, sanitary pass are luxury products. I cannot rule my head around that. I believe those that were doing that have wives and children and have mothers and it is just unheard of. I think the problem started coming up during last year I think no, October, November, thereabout. And it was um, an issue of national concern. In fact, as you just said rightly, NGOs, all um, Girls Guide and all those um, groups were all, and I'm, were all pushing the fact that they should, we should end the period poverty. And since there's been various demonstrations that, that has gone on, and we were thinking that at least the government would do something about it. But it's like all, all those agitations and everything are falling on deaf ears and then no one is doing anything about it there's no result whatsoever and then it is we can't sit down putting our hands inside our ties doing nothing while we just look on like that so that is why we thought it wise that if nothing is done about it from all the agitation that are coming off from the various groups then we are also going to champion it so that the government will know that we, we are actually ready to champion this cause to end period poverty okay so what makes you think that the government will listen to you this time around if there's been a series of petitions sitting at the gender ministry of your country and uh you know no action has been taken what makes you think that this will actually lead to some changes and the removal of these taxes on the sanitary products okay what is peculiar about uh um, our placard parade or our petition that was sent was that um, in spite of the various petitions that has been sent to the gender minister, this time around we went to the parliament house and then parliament was even in um, session and then um, we met the speaker of parliament and in the midst of the session, the speaker of parliament had to stop whatever he was doing at the parliament house and attend to us and then we sent our petition and the speaker also assured us that he is also very particular about this um, period poverty and the tax that has been placed on sanitary products. So he told us and assured us that, in fact, he's going to take a move, he's going to make a move that would actually, that would be geared towards ending this period poverty. Okay, I'm sure that the removal of the sanitary, I mean, the taxes on sanitary parts are not the only demands that you made in your petition. So paint was a picture of the demands that you made in the petition you presented to Parliament on the 22nd of June. Okay, the petition we presented stated rightly that the 40% that is... 40% uh, tax that has been placed on sanitary parts should be removed totally, not subsidizing it, not bringing it down or anything. It should be removed. And also the fact that young girls at the senior high school and the junior high schools, sometimes it's very hard for them to um, purchase the product. So if possible, they should be given free sanitary products just to stay healthy. Okay, so categorically, secondary school students and junior high school students as well not not generally not generally not generally generally the tax should be removed that is a 40 percent tax should be removed and then we should consider that those in the junior high schools and the senior high schools to be given free sanitary um product being part of that struggle i felt that it was okay with me and then whatever be the case if there should be another one i will be right there to fight for the struggles of our lady folks so that they can reverse this omnitious tax, this tax that is just inhuman and dehumanizing. For me, you, it's just like saying that drinking water is luxury. So when it was HIV, society saw it the need to provide condoms free of charge, virtually free of charge. That is society because it has to do with the man. Now it's about the lady and the lady's period. And they want to place value on it and privatize it 
simply because they think that they can get money, profit, profit from it. That has to also do what I think is capitalism, the elements of society now. And then you see humanity is now beginning to commoditize everything. It is a struggle that everybody must join. Indirectly, it will affect you. Directly, it will affect you. So don't sit back and say that it is for the women. And for that matter, let them do their struggles alone. When you do that, the collateral effect will be that on you as an individual. Oh, my name is uh, Tise Tomaledu from Lesotho. I'm coming from a United Organization uh, in Lesotho. So um, the issues that we have about uh, sanitary pets, uh, it's, it's, at, uh, it's happening at the workplace and it's, it, it, it's also happening uh, in the villages. Uh, about the workplace, uh, we have this issue of, uh, of uh, the women who go on their periods and blot it. Uh, they, 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 they blot, I don't know what to call it, I'm sorry. So uh, those women, uh, they have supervisors and the supervisors are, are men. So sometimes when they tell, they tell those supervisors about their problems, they are not taking that seriously, meaning they are humiliate, humiliating them. I don't know. I don't know what to call it. So I'm like, um, sometimes we are using the the fabric. What is, what is this? The fabric. Uh, let me say the, the yeah. So we we are using them at the workplace uh, when we are on periods because still in the suit we have uh, the 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 low wages problem. Right. So some people don't afford to buy sanitary pads. So when it goes to to villages, um, we have this uh, these teenagers. Those teenagers sometimes they they don't have parents. Sometimes their parents are not working. As I said in Lesotho now, we still have a problem of of uh, the factories that have been closed and everything. So. The teenagers can afford the sanitary pads. So the, the old men are taking chances of those teenagers because they are buying them, t they, they, they are, they are buying them those t sanitary pads and sleeping with them. So uh, I'm like, that is not good. We are still, we are, we, we are, we are still on, we are still organizing what we can do about those things. So as I'm saying, uh, we are standing uh, in solidarity with SMG in Ghana as, 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 as United employees in Lesotho. Thank right. you. Thank you Thank very you. much for speaking to us. Uh, so this conversation has been about period poverty generally in Africa, as well as the recent Don't Tax My Period Parade that was held on the 22nd of June 2023 in Ghana to demand the removal of all of these taxes on sanitary products in Ghana. This conversation also sheds light on the situation in Lesotho, where young girls have to sleep with men to be able to afford sanitary pads. This means that our collective humanity is at stake and we must take action to end all of this against injustice against women.